today we're checking out American things that Europeans can't understand. Let's get into it. Let's go. The United States is exported all over the world in films and on TV. McDonald's. And also abides by some laws and practices that many consider unusual. Europeans in particular seem to have a hard time wrapping their heads around some of them. From child beauty pageants to gun laws, let's take a look at some American things that Europeans can't understand. Okay, let's get into it. Sick of commercials. If you're a European enjoying a cozy night in on the couch in America, some of the stuff on TV may shock and surprise you. Hmm. And no, I'm not talking about keeping up with the Kardashians. Nah, I'm Kardashians. talking about commercials, which arrive so frequently it makes watching TV feel almost unbearable to anyone unaccustomed to it. Seals leaks instantly. Use it on Especially pharmaceutical commercials, which usually show grumpy men and women turned into smiling happy people by that product being sold. <laughs> These are usually followed by an almost comically long list of potential side effects spoken at double speed, like Ambien ad. As well as abnormal behaviors such as being more outgoing or aggressive than you, confusion, agitation, nah. and hallucinations may occur. Nah, even me, I can't understand it. Like, I don't understand why they, be, they, they do this every time. They be like, the mice call death. Like, what? What do you mean, mice cause death? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it with alcohol as it may increase these behaviors. Allergic reactions such as shortness of breath, swelling of your tongue or throat may occur and in rare cases may be fatal. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. In patients with depression, worsening of depression including risk of suicide may occur. <laughs> these types so of direct-to-consumer commercials peddle prescription drugs, which is an advertising standard that was rejected by the European Commission back in 2002. The commission stated that pharmaceutical companies were unable to provide impartial information on their medicines. If that's the case, why is it practiced in America? To put it simply, there's simply never been a federal law passed to outlaw wow. the practice. This is in no small part thanks to the fact that direct-to-consumer drugs and their accompanying ads are a huge business. Mm. And in America, whether it's right or wrong, the rules tend to follow the money. Well. Europeans might actually need a pill for the headache all those ads give them. May cause drowsiness, loss of limbs, telepathic powers, and a violence. Thanks. No place like home. Let's say you're a European who's just moved over to America. You found a house in a nice residential neighborhood and you're going through your bills. Rent, water, gas, electric, all seems in order. But wait a second, what's a homeowner's association fee? To a native, that's a pretty obvious question. I don't even know what that is. But for Europeans, it's an unwelcome surprise. These fees contributes to the local homeowners association, which is somewhat like a neighborhood watch, but managing funds to be reinvested into the community. It goes towards things like residential maintenance and common spaces, which oh. keeps residents happy and property values up. With around 24% of all Americans living under a homeowners association, they pay $200 to $300 on average per month in fees to these entities. Wow. Now, while some Europeans might struggle with this concept, it was a form of governance that was actually invented by... Well, I mean, I, I kind of understand that. I mean, I didn't know what it meant before, but I kind of understand it because, you know, if the park needs cleaning, you know, or certain things need to be fixed around the neighborhood, you know, it's got to be paid for somehow. I mean, I guess that's in my mind. That's how I kind of look at it. I could be wrong. By France back in 1804, the condominium law was exported to the U.S. where it became incredibly popular. So for any European that wants to complain about homeowner regulations and fees, feel free to blame the French. Wow. Vacant vacation days. The USA has one of the largest economies in the world. A tremendous economy, in the <laughs> president's words. But Europeans looking to get into the American world of work are often shocked when it comes to vacation time. US workers are not entitled to mandatory paid vacation at all. Really? Usually the issue of paid leave is left at the discretion of employers. Look, I'm an American and I, I didn't even know a lot of stuff like bro, what? <laughs> and yes, that does include national holidays. According to research from the US Bureau of Labor mandatory. Statistics, in 2017, only 77% of American workers had access to paid vacation. Wow. Now the reason that might leave Europeans slack, John, is because mandatory paid vacation time in Europe starts at four weeks. In fact, America is one of the only Western countries where law doesn't enforce companies to give its employees mandatory paid vacation wow. time. Don't believe me? Take a look at this map breaking down mandatory paid vacation time by country. Only the gray countries are known not to give paid time off. Wow. It's a working culture that undoubtedly favors employers over employees. 
Americans might want to think about learning Chinese instead, as employers in China must legally offer five days of holiday. Although that is after one continuous year of work. Win some, lose some, I guess. Yeah. But it's still like, I, I feel like, like mandatory, like vacation and pay for your vacations. It should be a thing. Like, if you have a good worker, why won't you give them, like, something back for doing good? Like, they're doing a job good. And they're always on time for work. Like, why, why are you penalizing them? Like, that's kind of crazy. I don't know. Florida man. If the American states could be looked at as a dysfunctional family, then Florida would be the weird uncle who once ran away with the circus and wrestled a tiger. The Sunshine State is the third most populous state in the USA and receives over 100 million visitors year on year. With so many people living between Miami Beach, Disneyland, and Pensacola, a little crazy is bound to be found on the fringes of society. But what Europeans aren't prepared for are the crazy antics of Floridians that make daily headlines. From Florida man believed that he was half man, half dog. In March 2019, <laughs> Florida to man. Florida man robs bank, strips naked, then runs down the street throwing stolen money everywhere. Bro, you will see some of the wildest Florida articles ever, bro. I see them every single day down my timeline on Twitter. In July 2017, you can search the internet for almost any day of the year and find a headline announcing Facts. Florida man has committed an utterly baffling crime. There doesn't seem to be an equivalent for any European countries, although the UK comes close with some of its questionable journalism topics like Britain's fattest woman ate fridge and died. Let me know wow. the funniest local headlines you've ever seen at stories at bmaze.com. Vat trouble. In Europe, like most of the world, tax is built into the price of items in store and online. So what you see on the tag is what you pay but Europeans visiting an American store might be left doing a double take at their bill when they reach the register. Taxes? There is no national sales tax or value added tax in America. Instead, American taxes differ by jurisdiction, of which there are around yep. 7,000. Differences in these local rates, state taxes, or combined state and local taxes means that final prices for the same item can differ from yep. one street to the next. <laughs> for first time shoppers in the US, this unpleasant surprise is a rite of passage that no one asked for. Tipping point. A meal at a restaurant can be a real treat, but Europeans visiting America sometimes stress about the tip. Although tipping anywhere up to 20% seems normal to most Americans, there's no such obligation in Europe. Indeed, mm. it's mostly seen as a bonus reward for good service. And in some European countries, it's even considered rude and excessive to leave a tip. Wow. The American federal government, however, states that tips can be used to satisfy the difference between the employee's hourly wage and the standard minimum wage. This means food servers, valets, and in-house staff. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know a lot about it, but it if I'm not mistaken, like, uh, tips are very popular in, like, like, jobs that, like, don't pay minimum wage or something like that. I don't pay, you know, what you need to get by, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'm, I don't know. I could be wrong. In certain states can be working for a federal wage of just $2.13 per hour, which is... But with saying that, it's always good to live a tip, I feel like, because it's just like, if somebody... Is doing good at their job and you really enjoy, you know, their service, like, why not tip them, you know? It's about one euro and 96 cents. So if you're a European visitor to the States, get ready to factor in your tip to the overall price of your meal. You might well be contributing to a struggling waiter's rent. Size is everything. According to an old saying, everything's bigger in Texas. But hey, if you're a European, you'll probably think that about all of America, right down <laughs> to its people. It's no secret that America has a little bit of a weight problem. Two thirds of American adults classify as overweight, and it's estimated that almost 40% of adults in the US age 20 and over are obese. Contrasted to Europe, where a survey carried out in 2014 labeled just 15% of adults obese. That's a king size difference mm. with a side of- I think I looked at the chart one time and I seen that I was actually, uh, is it overweight or obese, one of them. Fries. The American tendency to overeat might have height. something to do with portion sizes in the States. Mm. A study comparing portions in Paris and Philadelphia revealed food outlet portions were 25% larger in Philly. 
and a review of 17 wow. different single-serve foods like yogurt and candy bars found that 14 of them were bigger in Philadelphia. While a one state to one country comparison doesn't necessarily represent the whole, Europeans on social media often comment on how much bigger everything seems stateside. Have you noticed this difference in portion sizes? Let me know in the comments below. Also, like, in different places, like, don't y'all, like, like, certain ingredients, like, the food is, like, it'd be, like, the same brand, but, like, certain ingredients are, are different or something like that. I, I could be wrong. Bonus points for food puns. Oh, sugar. Living in America can really give you a taste for the sweet life, but your teeth won't thank you for it. Why? Well, some American foods and drinks have been found to contain huge amounts of sugar compared to their European yeah, equivalents. Yeah, this right here. Some common bread brands contain up to six grams of sugar per serving, six times the amount found in European counterparts. Jeez, but that's it doesn't end wild. There. Taking a look at Pizza Hut sugar content reveals most of their stateside pizzas have close to double the amount of sugar per slice as European versions. Wow. And in Starbucks, a UK venti white chocolate mocha will contain 62.4 grams of sugar. But in America, that shoots up to 72 grams. That's I've heard insane. of sweetening the deal, but any Europeans making the trip across the Atlantic might leave suffering from the toothache. That's insane when you, like, just to see that, it's just like, dang, bruh. Like, our foods really be, like, stacked up. <laughs> like, bruh. Gaps in the market. European standards of building a public restroom involve plenty of privacy mainly in the form of cubicles with doors that are more door than gap. Seems obvious, but it's a standard that Americans just can't seem to adopt. With ridiculously large gaps at the top, bottom, and sides, it makes for a truly uncomfortable first visit to an American toilet for it does. unwanted visitors. I never thought about it, but first it time, does. Europeans are left feeling especially susceptible to unwelcome visitors and peeping toms. Exactly. Some people even resort to taping up the gap to prevent prying eyes looking in. But as strange as the design seems, there are some theories as to why Americans build their stalls this way. For a start, high floor gaps allow for easier cleaning, and they do make it simpler to pass toilet paper from one cubicle to another. <laughs> On top of that, the vertical gaps act as a deterrent for anyone thinking of doing anything naughty behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. But there's sure. always the chance you might accidentally get a real eyeful. Maybe just close your eyes before entering any American restrooms. Triggered. It strikes many Europeans as a bit odd that in America you can pick up your groceries from one aisle of a store and a gun from another. Indeed, you can buy guns Good over the counter Walmart. in places like Walmart <laughs> and ammo can be found in pharmacies. But seeing these guns are still legal in many parts of Europe, what is it that Europeans find weird about the gun-loving, rifle-wielding, Second Amendment-touting American citizen? It might have something to do with America's gun-related death rate, seeing as per capita, there were 12 gun-related deaths for every 100,000 people in America in 2017. Jeez. Very few European countries exceed three gun-related deaths per 100,000 people, and none even come close to America's 12 per 100,000. The causes of the problem are fiercely debated, but it might have something to do with how easy it is to buy a gun. Background checks are usually carried out, but a research survey from Harvard in 2015 estimated that a third of American gun owners have purchased a firearm without a background check. I see, I don't know too much about that, but I, I do think it's something that seriously need to be done. I'm like to, to, to like, bro, cause it is just, it's bad, man. In it's Europe, bad. many countries like Austria and Germany require would-be gun owners to go through a rigorous seven-step procedure before owning a gun. Hmm. High caliber handguns are outright banned in the UK and many categories of semi-automatic weapons are illegal to own across Europe. It's simply much harder to legally purchase a gun in Europe than it is in the U.S., which I'm sure is a That's smart. trigger point for some. That's smart. Have you noticed any all-American... Y'all let me know in the comments what other videos y'all want to see me do. Hopefully I enjoyed this reaction video. Until next time, deuces!